Hey, Happy New Year. I bet it's a glorious day somewhere out there. For us in the cybersecurity industry, however, it's just another day. And this is made true by all the headlines that we often see about cybersecurity attacks. In this video, I thought about bringing up the top attacks from 2023. This is just coming out of my research, my own monthly research that I've done throughout the last year. So hopefully we can sit down and learn a little bit about what happened to these major attacks and of course, protect ourselves against similar attacks. So let's get right in. The first one that I would like to bring up is the MGM Resorts Hotel. This happened in September, 2023. And the financial impact for this particular attack uh, was around $100 million, according to the PC magazine. Sources for everything in the description. I also want to highlight the technical analysis behind this attack. So according to reports, uh, there was social engineering that lured employees from MGM Resorts directly through LinkedIn, where these attackers managed to leverage an employee and then gain access and per start a help desk chain uh, request to the MGM's cybersecurity team. Of course, we all know what the, the impact was, $100 million uh, worth in lost funds, but also the wider incident being uh, publicized the way it has been. Also, in terms of the operations impact, uh, it led to the breach affecting their systems naturally. So there was downtime, there was disruption in their services, and of course, there was hotel bookings and casino operations uh, affected as well as seen in some other news outlets as well. Another attack that made the headlines last year was Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper is a Texas-based and the third largest mortgage services in the US with more than 4.3 million customers. But according to uh, the report, back in October 2023, they were uh, victim, they were made victim of a cybersecurity attack that uh, potentially leaked a user data from around 14 million users, including past users, right? So ultimately, the financial impact, although the numbers have not been disclosed, could be massive for this particular mortgage operator. In terms of technical analysis, the cyber attack blocked millions of customers from making payments and processing mortgage transactions and their data being leaked, which can, of course, lead to fines, as we all know. And this is exactly uh, what companies should be also worried about, not just about attackers, but also making sure that they are in good standing within the regulatory uh, frameworks and standards that uh, they should be bound to in terms of the industry that they operate. Another company affected last year was Fidelity National Financial. That was back in November 2023. The financial impact has not been specified by news outlets, but from a wider economical standpoint, when we think about what the entity provides, we can understand that they are an insurer and a mortgage provider for real estate and mortgage industries. So they are a pinnacle within uh, the mortgage industry for business to business. So then the financial impact could be catastrophic in case there's ever a major disruption according to the finances from this cyber attack. In terms of technical analysis, the ransomware group Black Cat claimed this attack. The cyber attack caused widespread disruptions to their operations, affecting title insurance, escrow, and other title-related services, as well as mortgage transactions, as has been reported by secureworld.io. Another company that was affected was Latitude Financial Services. This was back in March 2023. The cyber attack cost this Australian company $76 million, according to their own financial statements. This was reported by Information Age, an Australian news outlet. The technical analysis for the cyber attack tell us that this has been a supply chain attack. According to abcnet.au, it is said the attack appeared to have originated from a major vendor used by Latitude. This resulted in the attacker obtaining Latitude employee login credentials before being stopped. Those credentials were then used to steal personal information held by other service providers. The attack led to the theft of up to 7.9 million driver's license numbers and 53,000 passport numbers from Australia and New Zealand at least. 
with millions of older records being affected too. Again, all reported by abcnet.au. Still looking in the private sector, uh, there was a major uh, headlines for the attack that affected the Clorox company. This was back in August 2023. The cyber attack cost Clorox a total of 356 million in damages, according to their quarterly results, which was reported by Industry Week. The technical analysis behind the attack tells us that the cyber attack damaged part of its IT infrastructure, which led to widespread disruption of its production capabilities. And according to ThriveDX, the group behind the attack is Scattered Spider, and the attack's uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures have not been disclosed. Now we had Capita, which runs critical services for local councils and military and the national health system in the UK. This was back in March 2023. The cyber attack that they suffered back in March uh, expected to cost the company around 25 million to 20 million quid, according to the, Gu the Guardian. Unfortunately, the nature of the attack has not been disclosed, so we cannot really understand what really happened there uh, yet. In the healthcare service provider or the health providers sector, we had Henry Shane uh, being affected in October 2023. The cyber attacks expected to cost the company millions of dollars. According to the attackers, uh, they said they caused $150 million in losses and threatened to release internal payroll and uh, shareholder folders, which was reported by MassDevice.com. The technical analysis uh, tell us that this attack was also claimed by Black Cat. Um, Black Cat operates with ransomware attacks, so it's very likely that they're, they launched ransom operations uh, on that uh, environment there. The cyber attack disrupted Henry Shane's operations, affecting its ability to fulfill orders and maintain normal operations. To close up, I have two more cases. These are looking at critical infrastructure. We can see that oil refinement uh, petroleum organizations have been targeted, but also ports and the ability for logistics companies to operate has also been affected. Two examples, Suncor Energy, which is a petroleum oil refinement and uh, even wider provider related to these kind of resources. This was back in June 2023. The financial impact for this cyber attack is expected to cost the, mail, the, the company millions of dollars according to NASDAQ. This was one of the largest attacks to impact Canadian entities and organizations. So this is why it made the list. The technical analysis, well, it said that, of course, it disrupted Suncor's operations, including the ability to process digital transactions at fuel stations, for example. The exact impact, however, and the exact technical uh, analysis and technical details have not been disclosed. So we don't know if someone exploited a... Uh, a zero day, for example, or a vulnerability that hadn't been patched, or if there was a social engineering attack that happened at some point of their chain, which is unfortunate to us for not knowing. Still looking at critical infrastructure, then we also had a major disruption to a major maritime logic logistics operator in Australia, which was DP World Australia. This was back in November 2023. The financial impact, well, when we look at the importance and the criticality of this operator in Australia as a country, we realize that DP World uh, is responsible for almost 40% of the country's maritime freight was, and they were affected by an attack, which means it hindered its operations and, of course, led to a lot of concerns for the wider uh, home fares within Australia. And a few weeks later, it, it even led to questions from within the, the Australian government as well in terms of other attacks that have happened to critical infrastructure over the last year as well, the previous year in 2022. It seems to be growing in a common theme, right? Critical infrastructure being targeted in Australia. Therefore, it bounces and it requires more attention. Unfortunately, no technical details have been disclosed and released about what really happened there. And in the last reported attack, there was Royal Mail uh, targeted in January 2023. They are a UK-based company. Financial impact was not specified. However, Royal Mail takes care of delivery and logistics of packages in the UK, and thus the uh, cyber attack led to service disruption and if, including international exports as well as reported by The Guardian. So look, these were just some of the top attacks according to some of my sources. 
I, I know there have been um, hundreds, even thousands more, I would say, just by looking through a list of attacks from this great page I found. Uh, you can see that there's uh, tens of uh, pages every month for noteworthy attacks or vulnerabilities that have been disclosed every month. So we know that this coming year, 2024, it's not going to be any better, but hopefully we as vendors, we can improve our processes and take better actions in order to mitigate and avoid being in the center of these attacks. Well, hopefully you found this useful and I plan to, to do more of these throughout the year. So keep an eye out on the channel. Keep an eye out on this kind of content here. If you find it useful, let me know. Let me know in the comments. And I'm always improving. I read your commentary. I know that people have made comments about the audio and I'm learning about it. All right. So hopefully this is a lot, uh, a lot less quiet this time around, but also hopefully this is a little clearer for everyone as well. And if you do find this content useful, remember to subscribe, share, and let me know if there is an improvement needed. Otherwise, stay safe and keep secure. See you around.